Hello, this is Captain. So there's going to be a new series. There's going to be a new player career build series. And so this isn't going to be as long as my regular build series. This isn't going to be as detailed or as in-depth or have as complex a building as my regular career build series. I've seen a big influx of new players lately. And so they have some of the similar questions all the time. And so I thought it would be best to kind of go through and start a little build series here where we focus on trying to help new players get through, say, the first uh, 10 play experiences in the career game. So first thing we'll do is we're in the menu here. And so those who are new to the game, you know, this might be helpful. There's a bug report, a bug report feature request here. There's the official Discord, uh, some other stuff here. I would stay away from the video tutorials. They're from the devs and they can be outdated so I re wouldn't really worry about that they just add the merch store uh, if you come through here you can continue your last game new game load game multiplayer settings and quit uh, settings I would go in here make sure your settings are all set up the one that I would highly recommend is if you go to general right here is physics detail you'll often see one of the questions a lot of people have is they'll download a build or they'll even like reply to some of my workshop creation they'll say the gear collapses or the gear doesn't work what you'll often find is a lot of us are building our creations with high physics detail one of the ways to try to make it so that a potato computer can run the game is you can decrease the physics it will start on auto I highly recommend you put it up to high if you have issues with this you can always reduce it but I re highly recommend put your physics to high uh, this will keep it so that if you see see I build something and then you build the same thing and it's not working quite right It might be because of your physics detail So I'd highly recommend that go through all your options here uh, The things like wildlife you can enable fish uh, spawn. I have off now just for to save me a little bit of uh, frames All right, and then so let's go ahead and we'll start our new game now I highly recommend that you when you're designing a build and you're really going in and you're making your vehicles that you do it in custom mode so let's talk about the different types of game modes here so we have career career is what I generally play the most career mode expand your Coast Guard Empire complete missions with survival style settings uh, in career mode stock you cannot use things like third-person camera you cannot see where you are in the map but I will show you how to put in the custom menu the custom menu is a menu that allows you to put on quote unquote cheats but what it also allows you to do is get around some of the frustration of the game say for example you run out of fuel I've seen probably 10 posts this week from new players I ran out of fuel what do I do where do I get fuel where do I buy fuel we're gonna go all over that in this series but this will allow you for example to uh, despawn your vehicle from the world and bring it back to the base in the event say you ran out of fuel and it could be very frustrating you put in a lot of hours to get your first boat up and running and something silly happens maybe a game glitch and it sinks if you have the custom menu on you can quickly do stuff like that let's say you get stuck in your build and you can't get out you can no clip out of your build these things I I think are really helpful to uh, cut down frustration so we'll go over that so a career game has those restrictions classic career I pretty much never play this and it has a research tree for some people that is very rewarding you do not start with all the parts you have to unlock the parts this doesn't really interest me I want to engineer my creations how I want them so I don't want to have to wait and unlock them I don't want to make inferior vehicles that I don't really want to use until I unlock a part so that's up to you if you want to play that mode I generally do not the last one is custom custom is a sandbox environment you have unlimited money there are really no stakes you can respawn as many times as you want and this is where most of us will actually build our vehicles it's it's nice because nothing uh, you know there are no costs to anything and so for example you go out you spawn the vehicle you go test it for a minute you go in you recall the vehicle back to the bench you teleport you no clip around and you can test quickly test out your vehicle and then what I'll do is once the vehicle is tested I will then go into a career game. So let's go ahead and set up our career game. We're going to use my seed. Now these seeds are randomized when you put them in here, but you can also put one in that you like. So if you find one you like, um, mine is uh, 192837 is generally the seed I'm using. It's a seed that I found that I like. 
And so you can put in a seed there, and it'll give you the same arrangement of the islands. Certain continents and certain bases will always be in the same location. Other ones will move around the map based on your seed. So once you find a nice seed, you can put it in there. So we're going to go uh, put our seed in there, or we'll use a random one. Uh, career mode. We're going to select regular career. I do not want to have to unlock stuff. Next one. Uh, picking your base is important. We're going to start with the starter base. Uh, this is where you used to always start. You can unlock some of these other ones. The benefit of doing this is they're free for your first base. This is kind of ranking in and small, but I think it is always best to start out small. I see a lot of players get tripped up where they immediately try to go build the Titanic. And you don't know enough about how the game works. You don't know enough about the logic. You don't know enough about how to set up the ship to operate in the Stormworks world to be building huge, enormous things. It is best to start small. You can very quickly move on to something bigger if you'd like, but I highly recommend start small. Uh, don't bite off more than you can chew. So we're going to start on the uh, starter base here. You can go to other bases. With the new arid biome here, which came out quite a while ago now, there is a beginner dock here, right here, the North Meyer Outpost. It's a lot of, you know, I would not recommend this. It is a little bit further away to certain other places. So I wouldn't start here. I would actually, uh, let's actually do it. Uh, you know, people have been telling me how challenging it is for new players to start there, so let's do it. Starter base here is convenient because there is a dock pretty, uh, hospital pretty close to this. And this one here, there is actually still a hospital pretty close to it. So let's actually pick this one. A lot of people have been saying this is challenging, so I'd like to test it out myself. So we pick our base. Next thing, I see a ton of new players who quickly just go over here and they start their game. And they go to Reddit, they go to Steam, they go to the Discords, and they go... You know, I was doing so great in my career world, and then a tsunami sunk me. Or, you know, X happened, or Y happened, or something difficult happened, or I have all these enemy AI shooting at me. You know, why? I didn't want that. Go to enable add-ons. So the next th step you should be doing is go to enable add-ons. This is all the options for the game. All right. And we're going to go through each one of these. And a lot of people, they skip this and it ruins their career experience because they have features on that they do not want. All right. So the first thing I actually do is go down here and I go toggle all and I shut them all off. All right. So as you see, we have three tabs here, official, saved and workshop. This is for add-ons from the workshop. This is for your own add-ons you've made. And this is for the uh, official setups. So I shut them all off. I highly recommend you go through each one of these. AI paths. All right, this is the AI's movement. I turn that on. I want to see, you know, AI helicopters and planes and people in the world. It makes the world feel more alive. But if you have a potato PC, you may want to keep that off. Default AI aircraft. Now, the first thing we should look at is if it has this cog symbol, this gear, this means it has further options. All right, so I want default AI aircraft on, so I'm going to turn on. But if it has the cog, you can click on it. So, for example, I'm clicking here, nothing happens. I click on a cog, it gives me options. So you'll see this all the time. People do not click on the cogs, and then they have a problem, and sometimes you have to start your save file over again. All right, so this is your AI count. If you have a potato PC, you may want to drag this down. If you have a better PC, you may want to drag it up. If you want to see more AI vehicles, if you don't care, you can leave it where it is. Click a, uh, default AI on. I'll click on it. Default AI count is set there. By default, again, you can slide that. Default Arctic mission zones. This is going to give you missions if you're up in the Arctic. All right, so if you want to go up in the Arctic, the Arctic is very challenging. I highly recommend you do not start there. Even myself, I have 4,600 plus hours in game. I do not start a new career in the Arctic because you have to worry about things like constantly wearing uh, Arctic clothing in order to not freeze to death. You need to make sure all your vehicles have a heating system. And so you need to make sure you have an, a robust enough electrical system. The AI will freeze to death after a certain period of time. So you have to make sure the AI is not going to freeze to death. The weather is much more extreme up in the Arctic. So I highly recommend do not start there, but this will allow it so that if we want to go up there, we'll be getting missions. Default building missions, we'll turn that on. Default cargo containers. This is for transporting cargo containers to make money. We'll turn that on. Default creatures. I want that on. 
If you click on it, it will tell you the spawn rate. You can drag that down or up depending on how many you want. I like that. It adds some life to the map. Default delivery zones. Dock bollards. Dock bollards are places to tie off at the docks. This was added months ago now, but there are rope anchors at each of the docks, and you can tie your ships and boats off to them. Default elevators. There are a couple elevators in the world. There are windmills or uh, wind turbines, more uh, accurately, and there are some air traffic control towers that will have some elevators. I sh uh, tend to shut this off. Uh, there's also the nuclear power plant has this. It's up to you. I almost never need the elevators. We're going to also add the custom menu to our game. And because we're adding the custom menu to our game, we can no clip if we need to. So it's not the end of the world if we get to a place and we need to go up the elevator, which we don't never need to go up the elevator. But it's, um, you know, I leave these off. And the reason is this. If one of those was to have a physics collision problem, they're actually sliding in tracks. The elevators go up and down, slide in tracks. If they have a problem and they're 20 kilometers away, they could slow our game down to a crawl. So I generally shut that off. Forest fires, it's very rare to get a forest fire, but we'll turn on default landmarks on default main mission zones. This is the Sawyer Island. This makes sure that we get missions. Default mission locations coming on, cog, click it. So this is going to be the frequency. Every 60 minutes, we're going to get a mission. We can go ahead and lay in a bed and sleep. This is one of the first questions people have is, I've been waiting around forever, and I don't get a mission. Well, if you'd come here and you click on the cog, you'll notice you can set how much frequency. It starts at 60 minutes. So those people who were saying, I'm waiting around forever for a mission, they probably were waiting 60 minutes. If you sleep in a bed, it will move time more faster and much more faster, and you will uh, get a mission that will pop up quickly. So I'll show you how to do that later, too. Base uh, Mission base time in minutes. This is how many, uh, the base time, so you're going to have at least 60 minutes to be able to do that mission. So a mission pops up, rescue your, some people. You're going to have at least 60 minutes to rescue those people, but it can also be longer. This is another area people forgot to click on the cog. I do not like the natural disaster missions, especially when you first start the game. Highly recommend you shut that off. Uncheck the box. Last thing you need is... Your boats are not going to be super duper stable when you're first starting. Your planes are not going to be great. Your your uh, land vehicles are not going to be great. The last thing you need is a bunch of natural disasters either killing you, which, you know, you can set it up so that you can respawn. But generally in a career game, you die, you die. And so generally you have to roll back your save. I highly recommend shutting that off. Display timers will tell you how much time you have for that mission. Display reward will tell you how much money you get for that mission. So if you, you know, if, if you if the mission is going to take you an hour and it's worth two thousand dollars, it might not be something you want to do. If the mission is worth fifteen thousand dollars and it's going to take you thirty minutes, you may say, "Yeah, I want to go do that. That's worth my time." So I put that on. Uh, oil spill missions are new. Uh, this is going to be dynamic missions from the game that will tell you like, something like rep repair a oil pipeline and the oil will spill. We're going to turn. We're going to keep that on. If you don't want it on, you can uncheck it. Default mission transport locations. That's going to be transporting people and cargo. They're kind of basic, but put those on. Default missions zones arid. So this is for the arid biome for the industrial frontier DLC. That goes on. Default natural disasters. I personally do not like the natural disasters. I don't want to listen to the sirens. I don't want the natural disasters. I'm going to leave this off. If you want to play with natural disasters, you can turn it on. If you don't want to listen to the siren, you can shut it off. You can change the frequency of the natural disasters to 60 minutes. I have zero interest in doing natural disasters myself, so I just shut them all the way off. Default oil survey. This is going to allow you to buy oil survey data, and it's also going to unlock the ability for you to drill oil. If you want to drill for oil, if you want to be able to buy the surveys to go out in the water, this also allows land drilling. So make sure that you have this on if you want to do oil drilling. Default railroad signals. I'm going to turn those on. You can go in the workshop. You can download other people's railroad signals. I'm just going to turn on the default ones. Default resource storage allows you to store things like uh, metal, coal, oil uh, in your base. Default resource trading, that's going to be allowing us to sell uh, ores and metal. Default Sawyer mission zones, that's up the Sawyer Islands. Default tutorial, we're going to shut this off. 
I highly recommend just shutting this off. I do not like the default tutorial. I'm going to give you a tutorial, essentially. And so you don't need the default tutorial. The devs have not updated the tutorial boat in a long time. It is old. People are struggling with it. I highly recommend you shut off tutorial. It is going to be more confusing than it's going to be helpful. It is, the boat is just not all that great right now. It's very old. And they've made lots of changes and updates to the game. And the default boat, a lot of people are having problems with it. I highly recommend shut that off. Default underwater mission zones. If you want to do some underwater missions, you get some cool ones like there's a shark cage underwater that they'll give you $2,000. If you go down there, pick it up out of the water and, and bring it somewhere. So you can do that. Def uh, DLC weapons AI. This is going to be enemies flying around the map shooting at you. I see a lot of uh, new players. Again, they don't click on the cog. They don't select their options. And the issue is this. You're going to have a bunch of enemy AI that you are in no way, shape, or form ready to fight that are buzzing around. So if I want to play with weapons DLC, I have a separate save that all I do in that one is I play weapons DLC. Most of the other options are off. If I'm going to play a regular career game, this stays off. As you can see, you can click on the cog, go in here, you can adjust all your numbers, but I shut it off. That is our last option. We're not going to go into, these are all things I've made, and these are all, um, these are ones you can get off the workshop. So we now have our options configured. We'll go ahead and we will go back. All right, Search and Destroy DLC. I own both the Search and Destroy DLC and the Industrial Frontier DLC. This is unlocking parts. We already went in there and enabled it. So don't be afraid that if you have this checked that you're going to get enemy AI attacking you. You will not. This just allows you to have the parts on. Uh, we already deselected that. So we're ready to start. So let's go ahead and confirm. So I know it's a little bit in-depth, but the first thing I see people do is they go in, they start their new world, and they do not check their options and like I said a tsunami comes along and it washes them away it kills them and they get very frustrated and so I've seen a lot of people getting frustrated lately or they'll they'll start their career game and they say a bunch of enemy, enemy AI have shot at me and this is frustrating this sucks I hate the game and they didn't go in they did not set up their options so I highly recommend take the time set up the options the way you want I went through each one of them you can kind of decide for yourself how do you want to set it up all right, so here we are. We have a, our character, so we can go change our gender. The female character is shorter than the male. All right, so keep that in mind. See how the difference? So the, the height, there's a height difference. So the eyes on the female are down around my mustache. And so the issue with that is most people are building their, I would, I would say most people are building with the male character. And so your sight lines and things like planes and boats and everything else is set up for this character. Some people are building them for the female. They might say, you know, design with female character in mind or male. That's what they're talking about. It's just the eye level is different. All right. You can go in here. You can play with the hair. You can play with the eyebrows, mustache, beard. You can go into the base uh, clothes here. This is just your basic clothes. And then you can come in here and you can change some things here. So we'll change myself up here a little bit just so that uh, I'm kind of set up for this. And this is going to be us for our uh, series here. All right, and we'll go ahead and start. The world will load, and bingo. So we're in this this southern base here. Again, um, a lot of people have had complaints about the southern base. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play here. And one of the reasons, I think this base is actually probably better than the beginner base, and I'll tell you why. If we look over there, that is a free car workbench. Free. We don't have to pay for that. All right, so we can spawn boats here. And we can spawn cars there. And if we look at the map, so I just press the M, M key on my keyboard. I'll try to remember to say all these keybinds. Uh, if we get this little house symbol, that, that means that we own this. All right. Right here is the hospital. The hospital is a short drive. So we can walk over here, spawn a car, and drive to the hospital. This is going to allow us to do land missions, and this is going to allow us to do sea missions. All right. So... Let's look at some of the things on the map. We'll go over the map here really quick. As you see, as I move my cursor, we get the X, Y coordinates. This can be important for when we start building GPSs. Uh, we have the regular map. We have the temperature. So as you notice, the arid biome here is hot. We get more temperate, and then we get cold up here. If we're up in the cold area, we're going to need to have that Arctic suit that I was talking about. Rain, 
There's the rain clouds going through, fog, and wind. All right. And so let's go back there. We have our money up here. We have $20,000 and the date. All right. So the date's not really important uh, right now. If we look here, we see another symbol. This is a house with a dollar sign. That means we can buy it. We hover our mouse over. It will tell us how much to buy it. Uh, you know, so there are different prices for all these. There are different benefits on the different bases. But that that's what the symbology uh, represents there. All right, so we're going to go ahead. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the custom menu. So we're going to go ahead and save. So this will be the new player build series. And I usually do that. Then I also come in here. I highly recommend you make a backup. And so I alternate between the saves, between backup and this one. When you're in a career game, if you die, you're dead. And so I highly recommend that you create a backup. This is going to save you a lot of heartache. In the event that you accidentally die, in the more frustrating event, let's say something happens and you glitch out, that's going to cause you to have problems where, uh, let's say you get stuck in a build because you glitch into a part, you have a little desync, something like that, and you die. It was not your fault you died. It was a game problem you died. That is a good area to get frustrated with. If you die because of a game bug and you can instantly respawn or roll back your save, it is a lot less frustrating. I highly recommend. Save some backups and it will save you a lot of heartache and tears. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and we are going to add the custom menu. Now, if we go ahead and we press the escape key, we look here, the custom menu is grayed out. We can't click on it. The add-on editor is grayed out. We can't click on it. In this career game, we cannot do a bunch of things. For example, if I press K, which is third person, I do not get third person. All right, for a lot of new players, this is frustrating. They are not used to operating their vehicles yet. They cannot see themselves on the map. Notice we cannot see ourselves on the map. Highly recommend you put in custom menu. It makes it a more of a hybrid experience between the custom game and the career game. This will allow you to turn on whatever cheats, you, whatever you want to call them. Cheats, uh, options is what I would call them. It allows you to turn on the options you want and turn them on. As you get more comfortable with the game, it allows you to do things like, say you no longer want to be able to see yourself third person. Let's say that we start out and we don't have any sort of navigation equipment. Let's say you're not very good at navigating. I, I was an airline pilot. I can navigate for thousands of miles. It's very easy for me to navigate in the world, but for a lot of people, it's very challenging. They just don't have that skill set yet. And so you can turn on things like the ability to see yourself and your vehicle on the map, and it will make it easier for you to navigate. Then as you build, say, a GPS system or a compass, or you learn how to use a compass properly, you'll start to be able to maybe shut that off. And But it's up to you. So next thing we do here is we have our saves. I saved those two files. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to look for them and we're going to edit the XML of our save file. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to look for our save file. So Windows C, Users, the name we're using, all right, App Data, Roaming. All right, come in here and we should find Stormworks. All right, so we have Data, Saved. And so what we want to do here is Data will have your vehicles in here. As you can see, this is where all your vehicles are saved. Highly recommend right-click that, copy it, and save it. I save mine on an external hard drive. I do it every couple of days. There are so many horror stories. People worked hundreds of hours on their builds. They have a PC crash, and they lose every vehicle. Or they uninstall the game, and it deletes their vehicles folder, and they lose all their all their vehicles, and they get very frustrated. Save your vehicles. So again, data, vehicles, copy that, save it to a portable hard drive, save it to another hard drive, save it somewhere else in case you need it. We're going to go to saves. These are all my saves. This one here, new player, build series backup. This is the most recent one I just made. So we're going to go and click on that. Next, we have oil spill state. If you're if you get so much so many oil spills that you have a problem, people have said you can delete this and it will get rid of that. That's a new feature. Be careful deleting stuff. What I often do is I will rename it. So rename it. You could rename that uh, backup or whatever, and then the game no longer knows what it's called, and you'll get rid of the oil spill that way. And if it causes a problem with the game, you can always fix it. But we're looking for scene. 
We're going to click on scene. Place. I'm using Notepad++. You can use regular Notepad. So this is our current scene. Okay, this is all the data for our present game. Okay, and so I'm not going to go into too much of this. This here are active playlists. These are all the things we selected. Some of these you can delete out and your game will work fine. Some of these you can add and your game will work fine. Some of them you're going to need to start a new game for it to work because they have associated files with them. This area up here, let's go through it here. So game data is where we kind of want to look. Mission difficulty, they'll get harder as we move along. The day, the time, the year, the weather, the total play time, currency. Uh, you can edit your currency. I highly recommend start out without cheating, quote-unquote cheating, of adding money. Now, this is something that happens that you actually may want to do often. Sometimes when they update the game, they break something in your save file. For example, they updated Clark Airfield, and it caused it so that you would fall through the runway. So it made one of the places in the game unplayable. So I recently started a new world. Well, guess what? I had like $400,000. I gave myself the $400,000 back. It took me literally 10 minutes to completely start a new save that had all my bases. It had all my money. So you can change that in here. But I highly recommend leave that at 20 to start with. All right, third person false. We're going to leave all this, all right? If you wanted to just change one of these things, for example, make it so you can do third person, you could change it to true. I'll show you how to add the custom menu. All right. So if we go into another scene here, this one here is one of my other saves. This one is the career build series uh, from a couple days ago. If we look after sunset here, we have creative menu, creative underscore menu equals true. This is how you add the creative menu to your uh, to your uh, to your career game. So let's go ahead and we'll do Control C, and we'll go back to our scene. So I like to put it where it has it, right after sunset. Then I do Control V, I paste it. You can also type this in. All it is is creative underscore menu equals uh, quote true quote. This will now give us the creative menu. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save the game or save this uh, file. Now we're going to open the game back up. All right. And all we have to do is reload the save. So here it is, new player build series uh, backup. This now has that custom menu in it. And we'll go through the custom menu. Well, again, I highly recommend you do this. This is one of the easiest ways to cut down your frustration in game is to enable this. All right. You can add as few... Uh, features or as many as you'd like. So now we're going to hit escape. Now look, this is no longer grayed out and this is no longer grayed out. This gave us the add-on editor and this gave us the custom menu. Let's click on custom menu. All right. This allows us to override the time. Let's say you are sick of driving around at night. Let's say you're sick of the bad weather. You can change these. You can override time. If you override time, it'll always stay daytime. I do this a lot for the videos I make. For example, a lot of my viewers do not like to watch at night because if they're on mobile they can't really see it's too dark you can't see the vehicles you can't see what's going on and they don't want to watch the video because you just can't see what's going on so often I'll keep override time on and then I'll do a night mission a night mission every once in a while or you can manually change the time if you shut that off it will lock it and it will give you the regular day night cycle override weather you know, I've had days where it's fog after fog after fog, and you get sick of fog. You can override the weather, and you can turn your fog off. That's also another uh, thing people enjoy doing. This allows you to do that. So vehicle damage, all right? Sometimes I will shut vehicle damage off. For example, if I'm hooked up to a dock, uh, sometimes the vehicle will keep banging against the dock, and eventually it will break and it will sink. This is devastating early, and it's not realistic. One of the reasons I put this on is it's not realistic to be to tie a boat up to a dock that is supposed to be designed to have a boat tied to it that should have fenders and not have the boat explode on you. So sometimes I'll shut that off when I uh, hook up to a dock. NPC damage is on. Player damage is on. Aggressive animals. Sea monsters, not interested, but you could turn those on. If you wanted lightning, you can turn that on and off. Infinite resource, infinite electricity. Sometimes you build your boat, you go way out. And you're going to need a winch. And guess what? You forgot to hook up the electricity. You just spent 40 minutes, you know, driving this boat out there to go, say, tow another boat back. 
and you forgot to hook up your electric winch. And now you cannot complete the mission, you're frustrated, and you rage quit the game. Better thing to do is you can come in with this menu on and you click infinite electricity. It was a small mistake you made. You now can complete the mission. When you come back, you remember to connect that electric node. It makes it much less punishing. So I highly recommend you turn on this uh, custom menu. Unlock all components. That's, uh, you know, when I was talking about the classic, you have to unlock the components. We already have everything unlocked. I see a lot of new players. They say, I ran out of fuel. My boat is stuck in the middle of the ocean. Game sucks. In the event that that were to happen, you can click on infinite fuel, you can limp back, and then you can go get more fuel. So I highly recommend that. Uh, map players. So right now, let's go ahead and let's look at the map. We cannot see ourselves. If we go ahead and we go in the custom menu and we go map players, there we are, right here. All right. If we had a vehicle out in the world and we press map vehicles that shows us on the map where our vehicle is all right so those are allowed in a custom game in a normal career game you cannot select those with the custom menu on we can select what we want highly recommend put this menu in it makes it so that you can customize the game and it's so much more friendly to a new player uh, we have 3d waypoints so when i open the map as you notice, I have my GPS coordinates. So we just got a mission here to search for a small boat. Let's say I set a waypoint. I can't see the waypoint. Okay, I cannot see the waypoint. If I go into the custom menu and I go 3D waypoints, there it is. That's where I put the waypoint. So that allows you to put 3D waypoints. Again, if you're a new player, if your navigation skills aren't great, if your boat isn't set up to have all the navigation equipment you need, you can put that on as a quote-unquote cheat until you get a little bit more um, set up there for navigation. But you can leave it on if you want. Third-person vehicle. This allows you to see yourself in third person of the vehicle with the K key. Third person. So uh, right now, press K. I can see myself if I want to do that. This is good for screenshots, stuff like that. It makes it a lot more fun. I need this for making videos because I often have to put uh, myself in third person, so I like that on. Allow nameplates at the multiplayer thing. Allow no clip. All right, so right now, if I press, for example, mine's uh, the home key, you can check your keybinds for that. Nothing happens. If I go to no clip and I press the home key, I can now no clip around. This is important. For example, let's say you get stuck in the wall of your vehicle. Right, and you can't get out of your vehicle. Let's say something's wrong. You can't get out of your vehicle. You press no clip, you're out of your vehicle, and you're set. I highly recommend that. This is the issue with no clip. If no clip is off, the missions will spawn close to you. As you see, this spawned nice and close to us. You'll see people will say, when, when I enable the custom menu, the mission spawned all the way up here. That is too far for you to be going in a boat when you're first starting, especially. That's going to take you probably an hour to get up there. And so you, you probably don't want that when you're just starting the game. So I highly recommend leave no clip off unless you need to no clip. Turn it on, no clip, shut it back off. If you have no clip selected, the missions can spawn anywhere on the map because the game says, oh, you'll, you'll, you could just fly to it. All right, so keep that off. Allow teleport. I'll show you teleport. So... If you click Allow Teleport, that allows you to, for example, let's say I want to teleport to St. Alexander Hospital, our closest hospital. I right-click and click Teleport, and now we're at the hospital. So this is also a nice feature. Uh, say, for example, you, you know, you're know, you supposed to be doing a firefighting mission, and you forget the fire extinguisher, right? That's a very natural mistake for you to make. You got in a rush. You forgot the fire extinguisher. Now you're pulling your hair out. You want to rage quit the game. Or you can teleport back to base, spawn a fire extinguisher, teleport back to the rescue, do the rescue. It was an honest mistake in your part. You shouldn't be punished so heavily. So especially when you're a new player and you forget these things, it is nice to have these options. Allow fast travel, allows you to fast travel around the map. Allow teleport vehicle, allows you to despawn your vehicles. Again, I see this a lot. They changed the game. You used to be able to buy fuel out of your workbench. So you almost never needed to go to an actual fuel seller buyer and buy the fuel. You could just get it out of your workbench and pay for it. Can't do that anymore. So I see a lot of people, they will end up 
uh, forgetting to check on their fuel status. They run out of fuel in their base, and now their vehicle is stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Guess what? You can click Allow Teleport Vehicles. You can go to the map. It will show your vehicle out here. You right-click it. You say, Bring back to the workbench, and guess what? You have your vehicle back. You still need to go get fuel, but you have your vehicle back. It's a lot less punishing. It's a lot more new player friendly. So I highly recommend that. Allow vehicle spawning. Allow photo mode. Photo mode is this. I have it. Mine's bound to a different key. Mine's bound to tab key, but you can check yours. If you press that, you can now orbit around your character, and you can take some screenshots. So you can do field of view. You can change the contrast. You can do all sorts of things like override the time. You can put borders on. And this allows you to do some screenshots. If you press the H key, it will hide that. If you press the P key, it will unpause it. So the world, you'll see like the clouds won't move if you're paused. But we can take screenshots of our person. All right, so that is what photo mode's all about. All right, so let's go back into custom menu. Allow respawning. If I die in a career game and this is deselected, I die. I'm done. I'm dead. All right, but you, uh, that's why I highly recommend you always make a backup save. If you, if you have a backup save uh, in my career game, if I die, I'm dead, so I reload my save. If you don't want to be dead when you die, you can allow respawning. You die in game. Let's say you crash your plane and, and you die. This will allow you to respawn, and then you can go back. So it's up to you. Allow vehicle cleanup. Uh, this will clean up vehicles in the world. Oh, I can leave that off. Uh, you can right-click them, and you can, uh, when you have a vehicle in the world, you right-click on it. You can do cleanup vehicle. That will despawn a vehicle, but it will not bring it back to the workbench, so you lose the money. If the vehicle cost you $10,000 and you clean up the vehicle, you just lost $10,000. If the vehicle cost you $10,000 and you teleport the vehicle back, you get the $10,000 back, but you lose the fuel. All right, so I know there's kind of... Um, a lot, but this is the stuff you really need to spend. We've spent uh, almost 40 minutes here going over this. You're going to spend more time being frustrated. You're going to spend more time asking questions on Reddit, YouTube, and Steam than you are to watch the video and to see all the options. I'm trying to be comprehensive here. It is going to take you less time to go through all these options now than to have to deal with them later. Uh, you can clean up all vehicles, clean all radiation, reveal the entire map. Because the custom menu is on, we do not have Fog of War. I can see the entire map. If you do not put the custom menu on, you're going to have Fog of War. You're only going to see where you've been. I don't like that personally. It does. It has holds zero interest to me to not be able to see my map, right? Because what would you do in real life? You'd just go buy a map, and it would have all the map. It's not you know realistic. I don't like it. Unlock all properties. This unlocks every property in the map. I highly recommend you don't do that. Earn the money. Buy them. You're going to get a much greater sense of satisfaction, in my opinion, if you're out there doing a mission, buying the bases. All right. So this episode was pretty much all dedicated to going through the options, setting up our world. The next episode, we have a mission already right here. And we're going to go ahead and we need to build a boat to be able to do this. So what I will do is I will very, very quickly go through how to set up a custom game next episode. The custom game is where I highly recommend you build your vehicles. And the reason is this. They don't cost you anything. And let's go quickly go down here and try not to break my ankle coming off this cliff. And so we'll go ahead in the workbench here. And if you look, it will tell me what each of these costs here. All right. This block cost me $2. So if I put... Uh, what was that? One, two, three, six of those. So we're talking $12. All right. So we need to keep that in mind. We only have 20 grand. I highly recommend you also have a custom game next to this game. Build your vehicles, test your vehicles in there. It costs you no fuel. It costs you no money. And then when you're ready, you can then launch your vehicle in a career game, and it works much better. Uh, a couple other things we'll go over, and then we'll end this episode. And then the next episode, we'll actually start getting working on our first vehicle. We'll go to our first mission, hopefully in one video. Uh, but I highly recommend go through this. It's very important to set up your your world right so that you don't have a bunch of frustration. We start with 5,165 liters of diesel, and we start with 2,165 liters of jet fuel. If we go on the map and we hover over our base, you can also see that we have that same amount of, or close to it here. It's a little bit different in, in there, but this is where 
our uh, fuel and jet fuel will be shown. As you can see, we have some stored in base. That is not a lot of fuel. If we zoom out on the map, it will take a little while for these to populate. So we, I'll show you now. If we look at my map here, we have these little icons. We have black uh, fuel pumps, as you can see here. And we have green fuel pumps, as you can see here. Green means you sell there. It says right here, oil gantry sell. That means you sell oil here and you get a dollar per liter. Buy means you can actually purchase the fuel there. So if we needed to buy diesel, we could come over here, fill up a tanker, bring it back to our base, and store it in the base. So a lot of new players will ask, my, my base ran out of fuel, what do I do now? You have to go to a place with one of these icons that say diesel gantry, and you can buy diesel for $2. If you're using jet fuel, which I highly recommend, don't go into jets early, uh, you can buy jet fuel here for four dollars. Now the money system might change. It, it they changed it recently. It's not as good as it was, but they were having bugs with the last system. You can also find some of these uh, purchase areas on land. Also, the different bases will have fuel storage in them, and you can actually go there and pilfer the tanks. So. Let's end up the first episode here. I know it's a little bit of a long video, but I highly recommend you go through, watch all the options. It's really going to make your game so much better if you have all this selected correctly. If you screw up an option, you're going to have to start over again. You're saving yourself a lot of frustration to this. So I hope you guys found that helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.